Bujou, Hanin, and welcome back. Uh, I'm Jerry the Big Bear Barrett, and it's an honor to be here. And I've been uh, sharing with uh, my Facebook friends and anybody that asks that uh, our land-based uh, teachings, all about the youth, the students, and uh, I'm so honored to be able to be sharing uh, this session with the youth. You'll be hearing from the students and uh, we'll be asking some uh, fun questions and uh, get an in-depth answer from each regarding uh, how their uh, experience is in school and is uh, land-based uh, uh, teaching. Are they getting enough? What can they see? How can they improve it? And so uh, we're gonna have uh, a lot of fun with this. I see we have a lot of uh, people online for this. So make sure you make, take lots of notes if you're an, educate, an educator, a teacher, or perhaps a student your own self. Uh, I'm a 60 scoop survivor. So I was uh, educated in the um, public school system. I did not go to kindergarten for whatever reason. Uh, grade one, uh, from grade one to grade 13. Um, and then I went on to college and studied radio, television, film broadcasting at Niagara College. That's about as indigenous as my education got, was the word Niagara <laughs> in Niagara College. But I uh, studied a three-year course and, and graduated at the top of my class as a broadcaster. And it uh, took a lot of money to make me sound this white, but they did it. <laughs> so here I am. I've, I've worked with uh, APTN, uh, the Native Communications Radio Network here in Manitoba. And uh, most recently, I was on CBC Radio uh, sharing my story of the 60s scoop uh, in a radio uh, series called uh, The Adventures of the Big Bear. So that being said, uh, we are uh, going to be joined by our students and uh, two other uh, educators uh, with support students uh, on the line. And they are Moriano uh, Owen. And uh, Moriano, are you there? I'm going to put you right on the spot. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. That's good. You've got your mask on, so you're you're COVID safe there. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. And I, I just wanted to acknowledge you, and we're going to also acknowledge uh, another uh, person. I believe uh, Brianne Mikas is there. Hello, Brianne. Hello. And where are you uh, uh, zooming in from this morning? Uh, Thunder Bay. Oh, all right. How's the weather in Thunder Bay? Uh, it's a bit cloudy and cold, but it's right. okay. All right. So uh, the, the, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, uh, you and Moriano. And now we're going to go live to our student panel on the other screen. And this is a group of, uh, well, the group of seven. There they are. Look at that. And uh, everybody wave at the camera. Hi there. All right. We have uh, Hunter. Hunter is, uh, we're gonna ask Hunter to stand up and then move towards the camera a little bit. Here he comes and good, perfect. All right, Hunter. Now, Hunter, uh, I need your help. How do you pronounce your school's name? Harry Stone High School? <laughs> Harry Stone? <laughs> All right. That's good news. I love your shirt. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. I love that uh, ribbon shirt. Where'd you get your ribbon shirt? Um, I got it from my grandfather. Very nice. You got your colors there and your and the ribbons. That's a you look terrific there. All right, Hunter. Um, maybe introduce yourself. Give give us your full name, your your first name, and your last name. Um. Ani Bojo, Hunter Indigenous, Hunter Paywis Indigenous College, Shwanaga and Donjaba, Megazina Dodem, and Ishna Bandau. All right. And uh, we, we talked about your school. Now you're actually in school. You, you go there as often as you can to, to get to go to school. Yes. Right. Did COVID slow you down? Were you, were you stuck at home for a little bit? Yeah. My grade nine year, I just, that was inside all the time. All right. No, I, I should have asked that. Uh, you're in grade 10 now? Yes. Good stuff. All right. Uh, so for the past two years, when you were working from home, did you Skype in? Did you Zoom in? Or uh, did you just uh, learn on your own? It was just paperwork, going to the school and picking up paperwork and going back home. Right. Just doing it at a home, just sending it in when it's done. Right. And... Um, 
well, congratulations to you and all the students, because as far as I know, you're the only generation that's had to go through a pandemic where you had to uh, uh, basically, you know, uh, homeschool yourself for the two years. And, uh, you know, I think a thousand years from now, uh, when we look back to this, uh, this age, people will say people like uh, yourself, Hunter, were, were leaders and warriors in educating yourself because you took you had to adapt to the pandemic and learn from home. So I think that's absolutely fantastic for all the students that uh, have had to go through this in the, in the last couple of years. Now in school, what is, yeah, what is yeah. your, what are your favorite subjects? Um, this class, Indigenous Studies and Governance and Contact. Just, and yeah. what was the second one? It's Communications Technology. Um, just taking photographs and making like short films and commercials and all that. Oh, that's terrific. Maybe there's a job for you at APTN or the CBC later on. <laughs> and and uh, just out of curiosity, what are your what are your favorite uh, subjects when you do filmmaking? When you want to go out and uh, share a story, what do you look for? Wildlife or uh, uh, other other people in your community? Mm -hmm. Usually wildlife, animals. Do, is it hard to sneak up on them? Yeah, yeah, you, it's a lot easier getting taking pictures of my my cat at home than going out and trying to take a picture of a bird or a deer or something. All right. So, uh, what does we've been the whole concept here, the whole conference that we've been chatting about is land based learning, and uh, good for you because you're actually going out on the land to take pictures of wildlife. So you're you're learning as you go there, and you use and you're using technology. To capture uh, to capture pictures of the wildlife, but what does um, land-based learning mean to you? To me, it means going out on the land and learning, like hunting, fishing, or like sweat lodges, attending sweat lodges, or ceremonial stuff like that. Just being out and learning on on the land. Right. And, and, and who takes you out there? Who is your uh, uh, mentor or your, your teacher out on the land? It was not so much as of lately. It's been myself as of lately, but before it was my, my father and my grandfather. They would really help me stay and keep in touch with my indigenous background. That's awesome. So, I mean, you're, you're a young man now. And uh, to me, you're a leader because what you, all, everything that you were taught by your father and grandfather uh, sounds to me through, you know, through your photography and filmmaking that you're passing on some of those teachings to, uh, to the community and, and to the younger ones as well. Do, young, do younger uh, students ever come up and ask you questions about, you know, uh, wildlife or, or, or your adventures? Not so, more mainly kids on my reserve. Yeah. Not so much like out in public. It's just more like yeah. yeah kids oh, on our reserve. So, what are some of the questions that some of these friends of yours might ask you about your adventures? Um, I don't know. It's just. Do they ask how to identify a bird or an animal, or how do you ask? Probably the most just tracking, tracking an animal. Like they have been asked how to tell if a, if a track is fresh or not. Like Very good. Yeah. All right. And um, when it comes to land-based learning, um, you're obviously learning that or, or, or that topic uh, comes up in conversation in, in, in the classroom. Are you happy with the way they're they're teaching land-based learning in the classroom now? Do you think you could spend more time outdoors, actually on the land? Um, I think we could, yeah, definitely spend some more time out. And I know it helps a lot of students, the hand, hands-on learning, it helps them a lot. Yeah, and uh, because I, I, 
I don't do, uh, I was never taught land-based uh, learning in, in my curriculum when I was a student, but you go out in the summertime and, and you would go out in the wintertime as well to take a look at rabbit tracks or yes. uh, some of the foliage. So what do you like better, summer or winter when you're going out exploring? I, I think winter, because it's easier to, it's a lot easier to spot animals. Right. Have you ever been attacked by an owl? <laughs> no? Okay. No. no, no. Oh. <laughs> <Get down. laughs> what, uh, these, are, these are important questions that uh, actually teachers have, have uh, submitted, so they, they just want to pick our brains here a little bit. What land-based learning activities have you enjoyed the most? Hunting, right? And yeah, probably hunting would be my favorite, the one I most enjoyed the most. Because again, that involves uh, tracking. You have to know what you're hunting, I guess, and then tracking, and then once you uh, harvest it, then you, I guess you have to learn how to prepare it. All right. Do you think? Um, that uh, you would enjoy more uh, school subjects like math or science or history? Do, do you find those enjoyable, math, science, or history, or would you sooner learn more about culture? Mm. I'd probably rather learn about my culture more. Like, I'm not saying that I wouldn't want to learn that stuff, but. I'd probably prioritize culture over those things. Right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, could we have a nice round of applause for Hunter, our very first speaker here. Thank you, Hunter, for sharing your, uh, your time with us, and uh, we sure appreciate it. All right. There, we, there he goes. That's Hunter, everybody. All right. Our, oh, it's Noden. Noden is up next. Noden is, uh, oh, here comes Noden. Noden, is it Rice? Is your last name Rice? Yeah. All right, Noden. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, once again, uh, your community, uh, please let the other the viewers know what community you're from. Well, I'm from Wasoxing. All right. Oh, uh, and, and what grade are you currently in? I'm in grade nine, just moved into the high school, actually. Oh, wow. I'm the school on Wasoxing. Hmm. Well, that's got to be a, a real experience for you to go through too. Whole new environment, new friends. Yeah, I already knew a lot of people. Actually, I'm surprised. Like, of course, like everyone else from the other communities too. Like, mm -hmm. I'm surprised. We got well, along seem, pretty well, I thought. Well, you, you seem like an outgoing kind of guy there, so I can I can see you making friends, lots of lots of friends. I myself. Yeah, I, I would, go ahead. You go. I was shy uh, in uh, in public school, um, and I and I tended to uh, because I was I had foster I had a foster family and I grew up with like six foster sisters, and then uh, because and then uh, biologically I had uh, I think eight sisters, and uh, so I'm, I was always more comfortable hanging around girls at lunchtime and, and stuff. The guys didn't take, you know, I didn't hang out with the jocks. I didn't play sports. I didn't do any of that stuff. So, but I was shy. You seem like an outgoing kind of guy there. <laughs> All right. Uh, with the lockdown, with the pandemic, how has the last two years affected you? Did, did you, uh, was it a challenge to work from, to uh, study from home? Um, surprisingly, I don't think so. I am. Um... It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Sure, we had to like all work from home. I couldn't leave my house at all. I had COVID the other week, actually. Um, yeah, like our community was uh, land owned. So we got to go my last year, like in school. So I think I'm pretty lucky for that. Yeah. Well, that's good. And like I say, uh, thank you for, for doing this. I mean, not a lot of people could isolate. And, and then, you know, I would think that Oh, I have to stay at home for a year, you know, at no school, but you did have to learn. 
and you did do that and you did continue on. So uh, thank you for that, for being a leader. And uh, who knows where your education will take you? You know, you could be the next chief, you could be the next prime minister, you might be king of the world someday. We'll, we'll see. I'll keep watching the newspapers for your progress to see, to see, to see where you go. All right, what were your favorite and what are your favorite subjects in school? Uh, I have two favorite subjects, I think. My first one's gotta be phys ed. Uh, I like going out, just maybe throwing a ball around. I don't know, just anything physical. I just love doing. Okay, so that's phys ed. And then my second one is uh, English. because I think reading is really fun. Like writing, I love stuff like that. Just like my own creative freedom, doing stuff like that. I just love it. Good for you. Uh, I was never big into the sports myself because um, I always kept getting hurt. And I think it's, it's because I have to wear glasses and I didn't wear glasses as a kid. So I kept running into the other players. They throw the ball at me and it would hit me in the head. So, but I, like you, I enjoyed uh, writing stories. And to this day, I, um, I was writing um, uh, uh, stories for the CBC, but I'm writing movies now. I've got, uh, and they're indigenous based movies um, and uh, television programs. I've written, I've written television programs. So my goal is to have uh, one of my movies made into a, uh, a Hollywood uh, movie. So uh, I enjoy words and I, I enjoy creating stories just, just like you do. So we have something in common there, my boy. All right, the big question is, uh, what does land-based learning mean to you? Land-based learning? I think it's just going out like back what our ancestors did, like my great, great, great grandparents, like fishing, hunting, cooking over the fire, just going out and like providing for your family. That's what I think land is all about. So those are like family traditions, You, but you did learn from your family, uh, I guess initially, maybe from your grandfather or your, your parents or guardians, they taught you about hunting and going out to, to the land, to the bush. Do uh, so. Do you pass on some of these uh, activities to your friends if they if they're having trouble um, with with uh, anything out on the land or the bush, like maybe how to fish or what to look for when you're tracking a, a moose or something? Oh, yeah. So you're a leader. I like that. I'm not <laughs> much of a. Oh, I think you are. Um, so there's obviously uh, indigenous studies in your school there. Um, and uh, can you relate to land-based learnings with other subjects, you know? We don't do much, like besides the Ojibwe class, there's like not much other land-based learning activities, which I'm surprised. I really feel like they should do more, like other subjects should do way more, mm -hmm. rather than just one, one class. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're not enough. Well, you know what I thought, because <clears throat> I'm always thinking crazy thoughts, when the Europeans arrived, and uh, uh, the non-Indigenous culture celebrates Thanksgiving, so that means when the Europeans arrived and the pilgrims arrived on North America, on Turtle Island, they almost died because they didn't know how to survive the winter, they didn't know how to grow crops, they didn't know what crops to grow, and just if it wasn't for us, the indigenous people, these Europeans and the, the pilgrims would have died, but we saved them. And I think that should be brought out more in, uh, in the history of, uh, history of North America. It could have been your great, great, great grandfather that uh, saved a pilgrim. <laughs> so. No? Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> do you think that land-based learning has been uh, helpful with your education? Yeah. yeah. Like, mm, we would go out, we would get a elder to come in sometimes, and he teaches us, like, some land stuff around here. I think that's really helpful if I'm, like, hunting or something. He gives us, like, like life experience. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I respect that a lot from coming in. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Do you watch the TV show Survivor at all? Yeah, I did. 
because these people don't know how to make a fire. <laughs> Can you, if we dropped you off in the bush today, would you be able to make fire for yourself? Oof, probably not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But you'd probably be able to trap something. These people on Survivor can't even eat a coconut. They can't get a coconut down from the tree, but Noden here, I'm sure you'd be able to, to get one of those sharks or a crocodile or something. All right. Um, so what land-based activities have you enjoyed most? You, you talked about going out and uh, was it tracking? Was it uh, hunting? Was it cooking? Uh, I definitely enjoy fishing the most because like me and my dad would go out because my great grandma used to own a beach. And we would always go down there. We have a cottage down there now. And like, it's great. But what kind of fish, fish would you catch? Oof, maybe pike, bass. Not much, especially around where I live. There's not a lot of fish around there. Right. It's fun. Uh, well, well, that's great that you know how to fish. I think the, 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 if we pulled a fish out of the water at your lake where you, where you used to fish, would you be able to identify that fish just by pulling yeah. it up and looking at it? Mm -hmm. right. I do think so. What fish make, gets you more, most excited when you when you pull it out of the water? I don't know. They all give me the same amount of excitement. I'm mm -hmm. always just excited to get a fish. I don't have the best luck for a fish. Right. Do you have clams where you live? Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a whole lot of clams. Well, always open, too. I always cut my feet. And I'm over Going for a swim. Do you uh, do you like catching clams on your fishing hook? Because and because it seems like it, they're very heavy when you pull them out of the water. And I, oh, I, I, I don't know what to do with a clam once I once I always take it off the hook and throw it back in. Yeah, I always throw it as far as I can back into the water. Uh, I, th I think that's the most reasonable thing to do. Use the clam as a baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> There's a guy at, at our dock and uh, I was fishing and I, I threw the line out and I caught a fish and uh, I brought it in and I didn't know what kind of fish it was, but he looked at it and, and he's, he identified the fish. He, he went, what the pickerel you got there? Oh, that's probably oh. me. No, yeah, it could have <laughs> been you. He was wearing a mask at the time. I don't know. It may have been you. All right. Uh, well, back to the survey here. Do you think uh, you'd be more interested in certain subjects? Um, like math, science, or history, if your school kind of involved the land-based teachings with math or uh, science or history? Mm, I think maybe with English, because like we didn't read anything on uh, Indigenous studies in English. Mm. I like that subject a lot, like I said earlier, but if we like maybe read stories from back long ago, I think that'd be really awesome, personally. Mm. Well, that's great. Okay, well, thank you. We're going to let you off just like a clam. We're going to let you off the hook now. Thank you, Noden. All right. Woo, Here we go. Woo, Noden. Hey, give it up for him. <laughs> All right. Uh, Joshua. Joshua Taylor, I think, is with us. Hello, Joshua. Please step forward. There's Joshua. Oh. All right, Joshua. Oh, there you are. Hello. Uh, and what uh, what grade are you in? Twelve. Grade twelve. All right. Uh, so the last two years, how did you, uh, in, uh, I guess, deal uh, learning from home? It was okay, other than the poor internet connection. So like, I'd be in the meetings, and my teacher probably was skipping. But, uh -huh. No, it I, was, I, go ahead. Sorry? Oh, go ahead. Uh, it was difficult. It, like, it got through it, but then after we got into the semesters, it took a while to get used to all four classes again. Hmm. Well, that's the new technology, right? And, uh, oh, uh, maybe, you, maybe you can help me with this. Do you know what the Starlink satellite cluster is? Starlink? Is that where Elon Musk is launching his internet? So it's like directly above your house or something so you get better Wi-Fi connection? Yeah. Maybe maybe that's gonna maybe that's gonna come to your community. Maybe it already has. I don't know. I don't know. What are your favorite subjects in school right now? Sorry. I say, 
What are your favorite subjects? It's gonna have to be Indigenous Studies in Ojibwe. I and I also like this, like it has like a safe environment to it, so it's like not like other classes. Mm. It, there's something different about this one. Plus, it provides food, so when I wake up for breakfast in the morning, I can kind of oh. take it. All right. Now, here's a question: Is the food traditional, or is it uh, bologna sandwiches? Like, like this. Uh, lunches are. So lunches snacks. Are. They're they're providing okay. snacks for you. Some food there, in indigenous. All right. Yeah. Some, some Thursdays we'll have. I don't think dying is between us so long. But like the friendship center will prevent food with us. Sometimes it'll be like spaghetti or like scone or scone dog or. What was the one we had the other day? It was really good. It was with coleslaw. It was like, pork. yeah, it was pulled pork with coleslaw. Oh yeah. Uh, so what 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 would you like to do once you once you get out of school or, or go maybe go to college or university? What uh, goals do you have? What would you what would you like to pursue? Uh, I'm hoping to make a bakery or something, but like have half the menu in a job but translate it. Which is gonna be fun. So, like, if I'm serving coffee, that's gonna be the best one to listen to people try to pronounce. <laughs> well, that's terrific. Um, we had a, on here uh, yesterday a, a, um, a chef, an executive chef, and uh, it took a long time for him to to get his uh, his degrees and his education. But he wants to do indigenous foods. That's his that's his thing. He wants to. Uh, he's a hunter, so he knows how to down a moose, prepare it, and then cook it up with his own traditional recipes. And uh, I can imagine how tasty that would be. So uh, with your baking, who knows? The world's best bannock. Maybe that's what will happen. You'll win an award for the world's best bannock. All right, now let's get serious here. <clears throat> what does land-based learning look like or mean to you? That, that's a really good question actually, because there are, I think personally, if it, like, it were more open into more classes, it would help a lot of students because a lot of students are, they learn better when it's hands-on activity. Like for example, when I was at home, if I was sent out on some assignments, I could walk out in my backyard or something and then like, like feel and like examine it, not look at it through an online picture or something. Or even like with history, if we can like, I don't know, like go out somewhere to the history, like learn about, more indigenous studies, histories and everything. Then we can go to like teepees and regalias and powwows, and like more hands-on activities for more classes. Right, good. And like I say, indigenous history has uh, been neglected, I think in the mainstream curriculum. So, um, you know, why not include it in the, in the mainstream, you know, subjects and whatnot. I think that's a good idea. Excellent, all right. Oh, ooh, here's a, here's a tricky question. Not to be too personal, but what are some of your family traditions? Well, way back before COVID, I think it was 2018, uh, we had uh, like a fishing tournament. I don't know. It, it always happens since I was young. We always go fishing and we caught the biggest fish, had the best fish fry and bragging rights. But that was, that was pretty much it. I, I don't know. I don't really have much tradition. Hmm. Well, that sounds pretty good to me, though. Fishing is, is fishing derbies are a lot of fun. Uh, let's see here. So, so, so there. You'd like to see more land-based learning brought into your uh, lessons and assignments. Do you think your school can do a better job at bringing in land-based learning? This school and a lot of other schools too, because I know some other schools are missing out on the advantages, like. They, some schools do have advantages and disadvantages of what we have. Like we have, I think, a little bit more knowledge than say some people in Toronto, but like powwows and regalias and like the ins and outs of indigenous history where some people in Toronto might not know about residential schools or what a Chateau Dunn looks like or what a TP is or like all the traditional. Well, you're right there because the, um, Toronto is such a highly populated urban uh, center that people, not just Indigenous people, but just people in general are too busy trying to survive. They're trying too busy trying to make a paycheck uh, to get from their house to their job or school and then home again that some, you know, the out, like you say, residential school, uh, you know, these are topics that don't, they don't even think about. 
so yeah, I, I think that uh, you're right there that that they should learn more. We should uh, more should be uh, shared in the school. All right, uh, so you've learned. Uh, yeah, let's see here. Oh yeah, here's. A, do you think you'd be more interested in certain subjects uh, like math, science, or history if they included land-based lessons in there, mixed them up a bit? Hundred percent, of course. Like, so in that way, I'm not sitting in a class all day and God knows how hot or cold it is outside. I can be like outside learning more, well, different things. I don't know, math is okay, but like if it was history, I would definitely be in that class almost all the time. Okay, that's great. And uh, we'll let you off the hook here, but thank you for sharing. Perfect. Take care. Okay. All right, good. All right. I believe our next student coming to the microphone is Kira. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Kira, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Oh, I'm good, thank you. And uh, thank you for uh, joining us here today. It's, uh, it's been a busy day and uh, lots of teachers and educators are watching right now. And so uh, they're trying to learn, you know, they, they give so much in the classroom. I mean, they, they're trying to, uh, do the best that they can, but it's important to hear back from the actual students. So it's uh, it's it's wonderful that you here and the other students can uh, can join us here. So uh, your full name and the community and grade that you are in. Hello, my name is Kira Barnhart. Uh, I'm in the 11th grade, and I currently live in Henby and Lip First Nation. Oh, ah, wonderful. And uh, do, 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 do. How has, what has school looked like for you in the past two years? So many students had to go stay at home and, uh, and study from home. Was that a good experience? Was it something you wouldn't recommend? <laughs> Personally, um, it really was a hard thing, especially being on a reservation, you know, a lot of the Wi-Fi connections and things like that. It was a real struggle for a lot of for a lot of people, including me and my friend. So it was not something that I enjoyed or that I would want to do again. Um, but this past year has been incredible, especially coming to this school for the first time um, and having that this indigenous space in this um, area where we can be we can be us. Right. And so uh, besides the indigenous. Uh, studies room what are some of your other uh, favorite subjects i'm gonna have to say math and indigenous english very good indigenous english that's like a hybrid of subjects yeah and, and is that the actual like i don't i'm i'm uh, you know not very smart when it comes to uh, school subjects it's but is that the actual name of the class, the class, the subject, Indigenous English? Yeah, so it's an English class and it's based on Indigenous like issues and like stuff like that. So. Hmm. And, and primarily the Indigenous language that would be incorporated in this, sub, this class is, would it be Ojibwe, Oji Cree, Cree? No, it, it's strictly like an English class. We just learn about like Indigenous like issues and history and all that stuff. Like that. Huh. All right, very good. Uh, I'll show you uh, a picture of me. This is as, as much uh, education as I got with land-based learning when I was 11 years old. I didn't have any uh, elders. I didn't have any uh, grandfathers of indigenous descent to help me. So I joined the Boy Scouts. And there I am in my Boy Scout uniform and uh, I'm wearing my Indian Affairs glasses. And uh, they, if you join the Boy Scouts or the Girl Guides, they have, you can get the indigenous badge, a badge. And uh, I guess you would have to do a couple, uh, learn about the indigenous people. But because I was indigenous, when I showed up, they just gave me the badge automatically. <laughs> indigenous. All right, let's move on. Um, <laughs> nobody cares. <laughs> I'll see you now. Oh, uh, so what are, Akira, what, is, what are some of your family traditions? 
So in the springtime, me and my family, we go out and we harvest like our medicines and stuff like that. We go in down the back roads and we dry out our medicines and we hang them and we make our tinctures and also like our things that we use, like our bear grease and our teas, all that stuff. And um, me and my mom, we go get sap water and we do that cleanse every spring. Now, you being an expert on bear grease, can you tell that this is bear grease in my hair today? <laughs> I could use some, I think. Does bear grease help baldness? I mean, if I put bear grease up there, what kind of, all right. Um, Which is still real good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's wonderful that you're learning about, uh, learning all that. I, it's it's uh, thank you to your family too for, for uh, doing that. Do you have any, um, like when you get out of school, like do you want to be a doctor or a nurse? Because you talk about medicines and picking medicines, and would that be something that you would be interested in? Yeah, absolutely. My mom is a herbalist and can technically doctor people, like with traditional medicines and stuff like that. As well as my father, he's like the medicine man on our res, and he helps he helps everybody around. <laughs> so it's definitely something in the family. Right. Well, that's awesome. Now, when I was your age, I didn't get any dates. And why didn't I get any dates? Because I had acne, right? And now, so with the acne, is there a, a traditional medicine? Is it, don't tell me it's bear grease that I could have put on my cheeks to stop the pimples. Um, well, you, you could. You don't, have, but... <laughs> you don't have to answer that one. All right, let's move on. Um, so do you feel that land-based education has been helpful with your education, right? Yes, absolutely. If I hadn't moved up here and learned the things that I learned, and I still lived in the city, I would not know the things that I know now. I would not be able to go in the bush and identify things. I'd probably walk right through a stinging nettle patch or poison ivy without even knowing. Well, yeah, that's uh, certainly using your, your land-based learning there to identify plants. So that's good. All right, a couple more questions, and we'll let you go here. Uh, oh, what land-based learning activities do you enjoy? I'm gonna say probably ceremony, fishing. I consider dancing to be a part of that um, and harvesting. Right. Uh, we had a, a wonderful presenter here yesterday who talked about traditional games. Do you uh, have you? Does your family in the past have they do traditional games to keep you kids occupied, uh, <laughs> or do they or do they use traditional games to educate you, teach you things? Um, my dad's side of the family definitely um, big lacrosse players. My great grandfather he was famous for making lacrosse sticks. It was a it was a big thing for our family, um, as well as snow snake when we were younger. It was, it was a fun thing to do. Yeah. Uh, have you ever taken uh, an Indian rubber ball to the head? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, because of my eyesight, I never saw the ball coming and boink right in the head. It was, Me too. that would explain a lot. Okay. I think there's, is there one more question here? Uh, do, 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 do. Oh yeah. Math, science, and history. Do you think you'd enjoy them better if there was some sort of uh, land-based learning uh, involved in that? Yes, definitely. Um, I know that there are actually sacred geometry courses <laughs> and stuff like that. I was offered a class, but I unfortunately couldn't take it. But I feel like if we could incorporate that into school and you know, math and science, it definitely falls under. That would it would be a big good thing for us. Yeah, it, you know, it, it uh, kind of freaks white people out when I talk about it, but and it freaked me out when I learned about it that we come from star people and they're actually on our star blankets and that we acknowledge that we come from the stars. I tell non-Indigenous people that and it freaks them out. So me that's too. <laughs> yeah, so if, But it's good, you know, there are brothers and sisters somewhere in the stars. All right, well, thank you so much, Kira, for sharing your, uh, your stories with us. Which, give her a round of applause, a nice round of applause for Kira. Or don't. Yay! Okay, there we go. All right, our next uh, guest here is, is it Taylor? Hello, Taylor. Morning. All right, Taylor, uh, tell us your full name, 
and what community you're from and you, uh, what grade you're in, please. Ani Bojo, Taylor Nation College, one to First Nation, and what? Anishinaab Bemowin in Indiana. And hi, my name is Taylor. I'm from Shawanaga. I am Sturgeon Clan. I'm grade nine. Grade nine. Okay, good stuff. Uh, terrific. Well, thank you for joining us here today. It's uh, like I said, I was a shy uh, little kid. So to get me up and do public speaking or, or what we're doing now uh, was very difficult for me. So all, all the students here who are sharing today, uh, thank you for, for doing this. Um, again, the pandemic, terrible thing. Uh, we all had, we were in a lockdown. What was lockdown uh, like when it came to uh, your education? When you had to FaceTime the teachers or in a Zoom classroom, what was that experience like for you? I did not enjoy that at all. I was barely participating at a point. It was bad. But we're here now, so. Yeah. Besides the internet connection, did you think the teachers did a, a good job in, in uh, FaceTiming or Zooming the lessons? Was that, or do you think they could have somehow done more? Um, I'm not really the best judge on that, <laughs> but I think they did a pretty good job. Good for you. That's good. That's good stuff. You know, we all had to learn how to use uh, Facebook and Zoom and adapt. So uh, the teachers were learning just as much as some of us were when it came to uh, to that pandemic. What are your favorite subjects in school these days? Uh, I really like MSL and art and stuff like that. Oh, okay. did you say art? Yeah. Good stuff. Now, when it comes to your artwork, are you doing traditional uh, themes or are you doing something a little more like a cars or airplanes? <laughs> um, I like doing anything really, but doing like traditional art is also really nice. Yeah. So uh, would to inspire your art, do you look at trees? Do you look at animals or do you, do you uh, dream? and then interpret some of your dreams into your art? Where do you get your, your ideas? They just kind of come to me. Yeah. What piece of, what piece of art are you uh, most uh, proud of that you've created? I'm not sure which one I'm most proud of, but the one that probably has the most meaning to me is the one I gave to Miss Upton. Right. And how long does it take you to, uh, from, from you, you uh, thinking of what the art piece, what you want to paint or sketch to the finished product? Or is it ever finished? Um, it can, it's really a range, it can take any time. Right, okay. Uh, let's get to the big questions now. What does land-based learning mean or look to you? It means to me like actually doing more of the stuff incorporating it and like putting it into the curriculum. So all these students can do it and they can enjoy it the way we do and the way we want to. And uh, a lot of this means that you actually have to leave the classroom, actually go out on the land or in the bush to learn. Uh, have you done a lot of that? Um, definitely not as much as I used to, but we still do that. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Don't mind me. I'm just in the chat room, and uh, we'll ask you a couple more questions here. And oops. all right. Um, family traditions. Did you do a lot of any land-based uh, activities with your with your uh, family? Um, we just did stuff like hunting, gathering. Canoeing, just going out. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, listen, we're going to let you off the hook. We want to get to everybody if we if we uh, can get there. So thank you for sharing this morning. Yay, Taylor! Woo! <laughs> All right, Alan. Alan, step Welcome. up. Hello there, Alan. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Well, I'm a little achy today. I've got this crick in my neck. Oh, that doesn't matter. Alan, uh, tell the folks your, your full name and what school and what grade you're in. All righty. So 
Bani Vojo Um Alan Disney Cause McGowan and Donja Bob Makwa and Dodum. So my name is Alan. I come from Magnetowan First Nation. I am 16. I'm grade 11. And I'm a bear clan. Huh. I am the big bear. <laughs> big witch. All right. Um, home uh, land-based uh, learning. Um, have you ever had experience with your family? Have they taken you out on the land or the bush to learn some of the... Uh, yeah. I've been lucky enough. I've been able to grow up all around this. My mother, she would take me to powwow, ceremony. She'd take me out in the bush, learn the medicine, just learn my culture. I know my songs. I know my dances. I know my language. I'm still learning, of course, but I'm just trying to get a better grasp of what it is, you know, it's be native. Yeah. Now, here's a because it sounds like you're so involved in the culture. And that you've learned so much has the indigenous studies uh, teacher or instructor have they asked you to to, uh, to speak to the other students do a presentation on some some themes or topics actually what's it called <laughs> i've been very lucky with this stuff i am the indigenous student trustee i represent all the indigenous students of near north district school board so this my goal is trying to make schools a better, safer place for Indigenous students, get more stuff around going for it and just have a good time. Yeah. Well, you know what? I can tell with the confidence in your voice that, uh, that you are a leader and uh, you have a, a wonderful future ahead of you. And uh, thank you for, uh, for being that positive and, and proud of, uh, of our heritage. So thank you for that. We're going to let you go. We're going to get move along here. And we're going to go to a nice round of applause, please, for Alan. And I believe we have, is it, is it Marquise? Yeah. All right. Marquise, uh, welcome. And uh, maybe your full name and what community you're from and what grade you're in. Uh, my name's Marquise Naganosh. I'm from Maine, Anawan. Okay. Do you have your way? Yeah. Do you have your way? Ani, Marquise, that's because I don't want to down your bar. Wam she she and Dodam half Jamaican, half Ojibwe and Tao. Woo! Well, terrific. And, and what grade are you in? I'm in grade 12. Grade 12. All right then. And what are your favorite subjects in school? Probably gym, language, and uh, business. It, it, it occurs to me just looking at you that you might make a, a professional athlete. Is that something that you might pursue is to become an athlete? Yeah, I'm going to college for uh, health and fitness training. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> you knew it. <laughs> me too. I have these weights that I carry around with. <laughs> well, good for you. You know what? We need more Indigenous people in professional sports and, and in, the, uh, in the dressing room to help with uh, sports injuries and stuff. And I think you, uh, my good man, are, are going to be a leader in that. Uh, did, did your family, I think, obviously, did your family help you with um, land-based learning at all? Were, were you out in the bush? Yeah, they did. I go uh, hunting and spearing a lot. Spearing, I can see you with one. Oh, I love spearing. I can do it all day. <laughs> yeah. What do you, stupid question of my, what are you spearing? Uh, pickerel. Oh, okay. Good. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Nice round of applause there for. Thank for... you. All right. And uh, now we're going to get to uh, Moriano. Owen, I think that's all our students there, right? We only had seven. Yes. Okay, which uh, so Moriano Owen, there you are. Hi. Oh, there you are. All right. Uh, what do you think of the presentation from the students so far? Are you learning anything? No. 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 Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, uh, Moriano, tell us your full name, where you're from, and what uh, what you're doing there. Um. Hi, my. I Bujo Moriano and this in stress will be that the can you don't do dry drink and this can I hi hi my name is more 
Hello, my name is Moriano. I, I, I'm I'm from Poplar Hill, currently attending um, Dryden High School. Okay, and what and what grade are you in? Well, well, eleven, 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 not twelve. While you're thinking ahead. That's what All right. Um, so once again, uh, the topic is uh, land-based learning. How much uh, land-based learning have you experienced either in your school or has your family uh, taken you out to the, to the bush or just on the land? Uh, I've learned a lot since I've been out here in Dryden uh, with Toby. Uh, we usually go out, go out ice fishing, hunting, um, camping, learning how, learning how to um, scrape a hide and many other things like that. Yeah. Terrific. All right, it sounds like you, you're well on your way there. And uh, so thank you to your family and thank you to you most of all for, for uh, you know, having the initiative to learn about land-based uh, um, learning. So thank you so much. And uh, we're gonna switch over here to Brianne. Mika, hello, Brianne. Good. Hi there. Hi there, how has land-based learning been for you? Are you getting out on the land with your family or, or perhaps with the school? Um, I grew up going out on the land with my family. We, we, I grew up going out camping and fishing. I grew up doing a lot of those things. But as I am in Thunder Bay, COVID, or recently I've been in Thunder Bay, uh, COVID has missed a lot of land-based learning opportunities with me because I was supposed to go camping and fishing a lot more with Kobe, but then we couldn't do to COVID. Right. And so, um, so then obviously uh, the pandemic has affected you quite quite a bit. How was uh, learning from home? Um, for the from the first uh, the first school year during the pandemic, I was in KHS and that wasn't really a good fit for me. So it was really hard for me to motivate myself. And how did you how did you keep motivated? Honestly, during that time of the year, I didn't really do any work. So I'm, so now I'm a, I'm a year pushed back. But, oh. hmm. Well, this, a lot of people experience all, you know, different, uh, the, the pandemic affected, uh, not just you, but a lot of people, you know, a lot, you know, kept them uh, at home and, you know, they had to deal with, with uh, issues there. So but that's good. You're here, and uh, you continue on with uh, with your education. So, uh, we have got so many uh, so many uh, students here. I'm just wondering: do the students have to get back to class now? Because it's nearing one o'clock. It's twelve fifty-five. I think your time. Yes. Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, how about nice? Give yourselves a nice round of applause here from your school. Thank you so much for joining us. There they are. <laughs> and uh, thank you to Moriana and to uh, uh, Brianne for uh, sharing your stories as well. It's been, uh, it's been an honor uh, for our, our uh, delegates to hear the voice of the youth on the topic of land-based learning. Miigwech. All right, take care. All right. I see one of our teachers. Oh, they're, they're looking at the camera. Oh, I see you there. Hi yeah, Annie. Annie, miigwech for this opportunity thank you so much do you have some some closing words there um i just for myself as jonah huffield one of the indigenous educators for our school board i want to say miigwech to nan for supporting our youth giving them voice a space to tell their truth um where they're coming from from our surrounding nations into the high school a lot of them are doing land-based learning in their own communities and who they consider a family and we try our best to reflect that. And we have Miss R here as well, who's trying to do that as best as she can from her non-Indigenous perspective of ensuring that that is finding, um, they're finding their voices here at our, our mainstream high school. So miigwech on behalf of the youth at Oshke Shkodei um, for doing this. It's, it's not always easy pulling us all in, but we have so many more youth that uh, 
would love this opportunity with you as well. So many gretch. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for participating. And just a reminder that everything's been recorded and you can review it again uh, online at a later date if you so to choose. All right, let's get to our play to win code word for this one. It is perspective. The code uh, word is perspective. Perspective. Write that word down and uh, save it for later and enter our draws and you could win at the end of the day. That's this session with our student panel. Uh, I'm Jerry the Big Bear Barrett. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.